go. Oh, oh dear. Oh dear. Hang on, we're, we're still setting it up. Alright, now I have these, these fancy, fancy overlays for you guys. You're going to be so impressed. Boom! We are a legit organization here. And uh, I'm currently a one-man show. Wait, wait, hang on. We, we got to bring up chat, make sure everything's good. Make sure everything's good. There we go. Gunrun says hello. Everyone in the chat, you should say hello to Gunrun because he literally just set up this computer on a desk that had nothing on it. And now we're live streaming to 1,500 people in like 30 minutes. So awesome job to him. Of course, I will introduce the players super, super quickly. Down in the bottom right side, it's going to be EG's Huck. Up in the top left side, it is going to be SK's MC. Now, I'm going to be completely honest. Yes, this is a replay because we were told that we're going to get kicked out of the video if we don't speed things up. So we had to have players playing on different computers. They wanted to live stream every single game that was played. That was their initial plan, but we just honestly ran out of time. And so in trying to keep with streaming every single game and every single series, they're going to be replays. So these replays were played um, moments ago. I mean, right before I set up this computer, uh, or before Gunrun set up the computer, these games were played. And so we'll see exactly what happens here. Of course, Huck versus MC, like that, that's such a glorious matchup that I think everyone would love to see. It's a matchup that has happened in the past. I don't know the exact win-loss ratio. I was hoping to look it up before, but considering this, inter this computer didn't have internet access 20 minutes ago, I uh, wasn't able to get that going. So again, if there's any glitches, uh, I'll try to fix them, but I am honestly a one-man show. They were like, who has the most experience solo casting? And then everyone slowly turned their head and was looking at me. And so, <laughs> uh, so yeah, we're gonna be slow casting here. I'm actually chilling out in uh, DJ Wheat's break room, and so we totally kicked him out of here. Although he is casting on the main stage as well, and uh, they they set me up. So anyone just joining, literally, this computer was not turned on or even plugged in 30 minutes ago, and they had me live streaming from DJ Wheat's break room using a terrible headset. I mean, we're, we're talking about, like, like bottom three headsets here. And um, so, yeah. So this is going to be a ton of fun. I'm actually really excited about this. I know casting live, uh, there was Liquid Chef casting. And, of course, casting with Rob is awesome, Sean, all that is fun. But there's just something kind of funny about being at this huge venue. And they're like, oh, crap, we're actually running out of time. So now you're actually going to be casting in the break room. <laughs> I find it hilarious, and I'm really excited about it. And also, I've completely missed the opening build orders for these players um, just because I'm stupid and uh, we just want to update everyone on what's going on. So right now, we do see MC. He has the double zealot out. And actually, are they going identical? No, okay, it's not identical builds, but they are both going for an early two-gateway. And uh, is it going to be an early two-gate push uh, from both players, or is this going to try and be like the anti-four-gate where you, you try and deal with the pylons and everything like that so um, that's something that you have seen a lot of players do recently is you know really focus on denying those pylons and here on entombed valley you do have to remember that this map has a ramp right here but also at your natural you're going to have quite the concave here so if you force field here and here you can force them into a choke where you have a massive concave and of course man uh, all the people out there, they love massive concaves, if you know what I mean. But it does like this pylon will go unnoticed. Oh, just barely there. Look at how good Huck is, man. Placing these pylons exactly where he knows his opponent is not going to be. And uh, interestingly enough, does put the pylon right there. I don't know if he put it right here. I actually don't know this specifically, if he can warp in units on the other side. But uh, maybe he can warp in a unit there? I don't know. This, this pylon placement is very deliberate. And it looks like Huck, he has three pylons being produced here at a time. He's going to have to cancel this top one. And there he goes. He does go ahead and cancel that one. This one may have to be canceled as well. But uh, Huck was either feigning pressure or actually had planned to because he does have the three gateways now. He is going to be adding on the robotics as well. But these two pylons are hidden so well that, uh, you know, even that even though MC was able to kill these off, um, yeah, you can see they were canceled. So resources lost overall is going to be 100 here. But uh, anyways, even though that the the rush was denied, these pylons are pretty well hidden. Now, uh, it does look like MC may be able to spot this pylon here because his army is not marching in a perfect line. Yep, there it is right there. And yep, he is going to go ahead and kill that one off. So this is not a great start for Huck. And it does look like MC is going to be throwing down a pylon there. How many gateways is MC up to? Oh, he's doing a super delayed four gate. He saw what Huck is doing, and he's like, I bet he's getting a robo. I'm going to try and end this game right now. Oh, if Huck tries to expand, this is going to be really bad. He may force the cancel, but Huck did make a big wave of uh, units here. So he does have quite a few units and did not 
actually warp in that expansion. Did cancel one of the pylons, though. He does have one still on the low ground. Unfortunately for Huck, though, this may be, like, his third pylon casualty. And in PvP, you cannot do that. Like, that that really sucks, especially since MC is going to be going for a 4-gate. Huck, though, is going to be chrono... Oh, well, not chrono boosting out anymore, but he does have any mortal on the way. Huck needs to land these force fields perfectly. He does have enough energy for two force fields, now three, just getting enough there, which means he is... Oh, excuse me. He is going to be getting enough energy for a second force field as well on this entry. So a total of four is going to allow him to deny that uh, attack here from MC. And it does look like Huck right now is going to be attacking the main base. Only raking in one pro kill here, although he has a lot of zealots. Was he able to really do any massive damage? Not quite yet, but he is going to be forcing in warping in of reinforcements at the main base, which is not what MC wants to be doing right now. He wants to be attacking up the ramp. He wants to be trying to do some damage here. Uh, some random force fields are thrown down there. They were trying to pull that army closer to the Immortal. But Huck is going to deny this rush from MC. And all of a sudden, this game is very wonky because MC went for a 4-gate, but he's not even able to pressure. And how many games do you see where a 4-gate is... Uh, are you not able to pressure at all? It does look like, though, Huck is going to end up losing some of these zealots, but doing a surprising amount of damage. But the positioning was horrible for Huck there. You can see only two Zelts were attacking the three. I don't know how the logistics of that works out, but that's exactly what happened right there. Sentry, you are so stupid. Why are you so stupid? Go ahead and get down at the bottom of that ramp. And uh, it does look like now MC still chilling out. He does have the contain set up, but Huck's going to be feeling pretty awesome right here. Is he going to load up the Immortal? Yes, he does. He may load him out on the low ground. MC, uh-oh. Uh-oh, if he doesn't spot it. Oh, he did spot it. You can see the pylon right there does spot this. Huck, you cannot be doing this, man. I think these units are actually stuck back here. Huck, what are you, what are you doing, Huck? Oh, what, what are you doing? Your units, your units are stuck here. You can't be doing this. And there's a force that was actually pushing the Immortal out there to actually be able in range to shoot. So I feel like that ended up helping Huck here. But it looks like he messed that up. Oh, my God. That was that was not good. And he is going to lose the War Prism here, which is 200 resources that he's never getting back. And also... 200 resources, not not only the 200 resources, but the fact that he made, you know, that instead of an additional immortal. So I don't know what that was. That is one of those silly things that you almost never see. And it does look like that. Remember, immortals, very good. They, they're able to kill off zealots and sentries just fine, but they're obviously more powerful. Versus stalkers, magic actually trapped that stalker there uh, as if it was like a fly trap or something, man. That stalker was going absolutely nowhere fast and did kill it off. What is the unit's loss looking like here? Ouch. That's what's looking like. If your name is Huck, he, uh, I, 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 like, I don't know what else to say about that because he put them right here and his units actually couldn't get out from that location. So I don't know what his plan was there, but uh, that was a huge mistake. The pylon is out of range. If you notice, MC placed it perfectly to where the stalkers can't actually shoot it from the high ground. Even though it may look like they can, they actually can. And we do have the expansion going up for MC. Now, usually in Protoss versus Protoss, us, us Brotoss like to joke, the first one to expand is the one that's going to lose the game. But MC, like, he's very safe to expand here. He's ahead in supply. He can get his tech going right now. You can see he does have the robotics on the way, Corona boosting out his own uh, Immortals there. And we do see Huck going for Blink here. Not a bad choice, but uh, he really can't break down the ramp because if he breaks down the ramp, all of a sudden he's getting force fielded down here. His army is going nowhere. And MC, he's, he's sitting back. He's got a big grin on his face. Because he knows that he's going to be in great shape as far as the expansion timing. His probe count's going to be just fine. I am surprised to see that uh, MC is not making more workers here. He's going to back out. This is a great time to back out right when your expansion is finishing. Because all of a sudden you have more to defend back home. The observer for MC is kind of just chilling out over here. He's like, oh, hey, what's going on? Oh, I see everything. And he's going to be feeling great about this because nothing Huck is doing is going unseen by MC. He's seen the Corona Boost being dumped onto the Blink tech. He's going to know it's Blink and know that it's not Zealot Legs. It also tells him he's not getting High Templar to be morphing into Archon. So MC, I mean, he couldn't be in better shape. Like, he's he's got a worker lead. Income lead is going to be skyrocketing here, especially if he makes a couple more probes. Although he did manage to saturate this fairly well. His main base still decently saturated. You can see there's a couple mineral patches that don't have two probes on them, like this one and that one right there. So, you know, it's, it's not the perfect ideal saturation, but now Huck does have Blink. He's going to be moving out, but taking a look at the army size tab, you can see that it is 60 to 44, and I, I can think of zero ways that Huck can actually win this, especially the huge concave is going to lose one stalker. Wasn't even able to blink away because that was on cooldown from trying to get up here earlier. And Huck, I don't know, just lost another stalker there and a zealot as well. So that's going to be not very good for him either. And it does look like now in this engagement, Huck is just getting obliterated not only by the overwhelming forces of MC, but the force fields as well, preventing these units from attacking the important units. More force fields going down. This poor immortal man, he is completely trapped 
getting tickled to death by the sentries and really Huck, I mean after messing up that initial drop and it wasn't even really a drop, it was so he could try and break down the ramp but uh, you know at this point I really don't know what Huck can do to get back in this I mean because the thing is with this matchup is that if you get behind I mean how do you recover? It's almost unrecoverable if you guys have the basic uh, the, the same unit composition here and so right now it looks like MC managing to once again do what uh, Huck was trying to do before. Although, MC, you do have units back here to defend, I hope, as uh, that Immortal will be able to take out all these Stalkers, I think. Uh, no, he decides to go for it. I don't know, I think he should be going for probes and ignoring the Immortal, but uh, he will have, oh, high second Immortal right here. So that's gonna be able to clean those up, and it does look like Huck trying to hang on with two sentries. And when your entire life depends on two sentries, that is not going to be great. So there's the GG from game number one. So that is going to be favoring uh, MC here moving forward. So I'm going to go ahead and get the next game going. And I'm just going to try and uh, I wouldn't say go as quickly as possible, but I am going to go ahead and get the next game going as soon as I possibly can.